Reviewing the Sharp Aquas Crystal has actually made me quite nostalgic about the past Sidekick devices. I thought it'd be an appropriate time to give a retro review of the Sidekick 4G, the last ever Sidekick phone that was released. And of course, it has 4G LTE support uh, and comes on contract with the T-Mobile here in the United States. However, as opposed to being produced by Danger and Sharp, this one is actually produced by, by Samsung. Uh, with that being said, the performance of this device is definitely not comparable to a Samsung Galaxy phone in the sense that the processor is a lot less responsive. Uh, but with that being stated, you do have a very nice QWERTY keyboard that kind of slides open like so, although it doesn't kind of flip open, uh, which isn't as cool in my opinion. But with that being said, performance is still respectable for a mid-tier entry-level Android phone that's great for messaging fanatics out there that need a keyboard to type on, and it's still pretty comfortable and in easy to use. hardware, the first thing I noticed about the Sidekick 4G was how hefty it was. Weighing in at 162 grams, this is one of the heavier Samsung phones that I've encountered, despite being crafted entirely out of plastic. With that being said, it definitely feels reassuring in the hand because of the extra weight, and overall it's still very comfortable to hold despite being longer than most smartphones. With that being mentioned, we do have a classical Sidekick design going on. For example, there's the shoulder quick launch key that we find on most Sidekick products. There's also a home key, a menu, and a back key, complementary of Android OS. And of course, the optical trackpad, which makes things a bit easier to navigate in case you don't want to use the touchscreen display or the keyboard. On the left-hand spine, you have access to a power on and off switch. There's also a volume rocker that's relatively tactile and easy to press, and also a 3.5mm jack that's decently placed. On the right hand side, you find access to a micro USB for charging and syncing. Fully charging the phone takes about 2 hours to complete, and a full charge will last about 1.5 days before you need to recharge the phone again. There's also a 2 stage camera shutter key for the autofocus enabled 3 megapixel camera on the back. Unfortunately, the camera itself, uh, although it produces some pretty good shots, doesn't have a LED flash or does it have a self portrait mirror. On the back, you also have access to the uh, if you remove the back cover, you have access to the SIM card slot, and also you have access to a micro SD card slot. Unfortunately, it's not hot swappable, so you do need to remove the battery in order to access those features. Taking a quick look at the keyboard, which is again the main star of the show here, it's actually a very comfortable keyboard to type on, like with most Sidekick products. We have a full, comfortable 5-row keyboard that's nicely spaced, and all the keys are nicely risen above the surface as well, which makes them tactile, responsive, and easy to press, even if you have larger fingers like me. Overall, the keyboard itself is also backlit, which makes it possible to see the keys in uh, darker environments, which is another huge plus. The keys are interestingly shaped, and they're also large enough to be pressed, uh, even if you are texting at a rapid speed, and I think that overall it makes it a satisfying click whenever you're pressing on it as well. So in terms of giving MMS text messages for emailing, for web browsing, this is a great keyboard to go with, and it's one of the few Samsung phones that has great text messaging if you do need an Android platform or a smartphone to go along with it. Otherwise, the Android experience on the phone itself has been heavily customized because of that whole Sidekick portfolio that's been going on. We have an entirely hyper-stylized look and feel on top of the UI as opposed to the traditional Samsung TouchWiz. And overall, we think this is an appropriate skin to be placed on the phone considering that the target audience is going to be for young teenagers uh, and also six for different young homepages that you can populate with your favorite widgets and also applications. The app store on this phone is also pretty interesting. It's been uh, recustomized and designed by Samsung. Uh, so we have access again to those four different pages of applications. And of course you can add more in the case that you install more applications from the Google Marketplace. Uh, it's pretty fluid, it's pretty responsive. Again, underneath the hood, we have a one gigahertz processor. It's a Hummingbird processor, 512 megabytes of RAM and one gig of ROM that's further expandable via micro SD card. So the specs are mid range and they definitely function pretty well for a, uh, again, messaging handset. As long as you don't have any too many programs open in the background, things are still pretty lucid and responsive. We saw that uh, drop down notification drawer for access to some quick uh, notifications to Twitter, MySpace, email, and anything that might be happening for downloading programs. And that's basically it as far as the main UI is concerned. You also find on the bottom here a quick launch key for the phone dialer pad, which has also been slightly re redesigned to match the design language of the Sidekick. It gives a more youthful and jubilant look to it overall. You have access to your call lock, favorites, and also voicemail on the very top. And the optical trackpad is also pretty responsive and easy to use, especially if you aren't a fan of touchscreen devices. And you can also use the contacts there to search up your phone book for new no notifications. Now, there are quite a few applications that are pre-installed by Samsung on the Sidekick 4G. So for example, you can see how we have access to account and syncing, there's an app pack by T-Mobile, there's access to a Facebook client built in, there's actually a Drive Smart app that tells you to, again, drive smart in your car and not to text, and there's the usual services provided by Google like Gmail, but there's also things like um, 
navigation on here. There's a media hub by Samsung. You also have access to a Think Free Office, which allows you to edit documents on the go, like PowerPoint, Word. There's also Quick for video chat. That's that's at three megapixels, again, it's not the best camera in the world, but with autofocus enabled, it actually is a pretty good performer. So if we have access to a card over here, we wanted to quickly take a look at. I can capture it by creating autofocus and then capturing a shot. It takes a little bit longer than I like it to be, but colors are very accurate, they're responsive. Even in darker environments, shots tend to be out, uh, tend to be rather impressive. And after I take a shot, I can edit it or send it via MMS, email, or to a social media client. So there's a lot of options there. Sliding on the left, we have access to some other uh, options for you, such as like swapping the camera to the front-facing camera. I can use the camcorder, which shoots at 40, 480p uh, resolution, and I can also swap between different filters. Uh, I can also tap to focus on whatever place I want to using the camera. So overall, a decent camera is on board, despite not being too fancy or overly exaggerated. As far as the front-facing camera is concerned, it's not as good. A low-light performance suffers, but at least it is usable for video chatting applications like Skype. The music application has also been overhauled by Samsung. We now have a Twitter radio tab that allows you to play back internet radio if I want to do that. There's also a video tab for playing back directly YouTube videos or my own videos installed on an SD card or on the phone. And finally, under music, you can see you can shuffle through your artists by songs, genres, and recent. It's been slightly tweaked uh, to also display some cover art information if you want to do that. And also you can slide through alphabetically through your songs. There's a bit of lag if you have too many songs on your phone, but overall it definitely does work and it's an uh, interesting experience. It makes things a bit more colorful and we prefer it to the original stock version on Android. The web browser on the Sidekick 4G is good, even though it uses just the standard WebKit version found on most Android phones, although you can see that most flash elements are fully working from the images, the graphics, and videos that will be loaded onto the web page. We have loaded the full version of the New York Times just to show you that this is a pretty powerful browser found on the Sidekick 4G, and pages load uh, at a respectable speed uh, by for, via Wi-Fi or via 4G, you can select from that, and you can also see that pinch to zoom works pretty well, it's smooth and also pretty responsive, so the processor does go to do a good job of browsing the web. Taking a look at the keyboard next, it's a little bit cramped if you use the virtual keyboard, although swipe is installed, so it can allow you to type at a faster rate. Of course, you can always use the slide out keyboard for even faster text entry, which of course is the preferred version uh, for entering text on this particular phone. So pressing on the kind of hot key over here, you have access to some shortcuts that you can program and find your way around. They correspond to your recent applications like the web browser, alarm clock, settings, YouTube, and also you have a shortcut for alarms and clocks that has been set there by default, but you can then program by yourself. This is a nice uh, kind of customized key that we don't really see on any other Android handset, and it's kind of a nice feature to have, I think, on the Sidekick 4G. Taking a look at the lock screen is another area where the Psychic 4G has been redesigned. We have a time and date information, and sliding down brings you into the standard home, uh, home screen, but if I slide up, I have a quick access to the alarm clock functionality, the stopwatch, the timer, and also the alarm. Again, it's been slightly redesigned by Samsung to be a bit more stylized to match the phone's design. As a phone, the Psychic 4G also excels. As I previously uh, mentioned, the reception on the phone is great, and so the microphone is also very strong in addition to the earpiece. Lastly, I, I found that the speakerphone on the back was also very loud, so if you're calling someone in noisier conditions, you'll still be able to hear them, and your caller will generally still be able to hear you as well. So a pretty good phone, which is, again, very important, I guess, even if something is a smartphone, um, it's still a very good device to, for you to make calls and to text with. Taking some other applications on here, you also have access to a YouTube client. Uh, this allows you to watch streaming videos on the go. So if I wanted to give a quick demo of that, I can try and find one of my videos. So there, here's an intro video that I have. You can view your information related to comments and also uh, leave any comments if you want to for any videos, like and dislike it. This is basically the uh, same version of YouTube we've seen already a few times. You can also tilt the screen to use the accelerometer and have the uh, video be played in high definition, also full screen mode. Scrubbing also works pretty well, and it's generally a pleasing experience to watch video, even though at 3.5 inches, the screen isn't massive. That being said, the screen resolution is 800 by 480, which although is an HD quality, the size of 3.5 inches means that the pixel per inch count is actually quite high on the uh, Sidekick 4G. So your videos are generally crisp, and also you don't have any issues with viewing angles either. So like with most Samsung devices, the screen is excellent and also top notch. 
Basically, that's it as far as main core functions are concerned. Uh, we do have a few more things on here that have been customized and built in like we talked about, like Universal Composer. There's a mini gallery for you to take notes with. There's a media hub for watching back your videos and also for you to uh, view any images you have stored on the phone. But again, those are the core functions. As far as gaming is concerned, you have access to the Google Play Store to install uh, any more games that you might want to. There's also maps for turn by turn navigational directions and that works pretty well with the GPS. A fix takes about uh, one minute to fully load if you're outdoors. And playing back games, again, you do have a pretty good performance underneath the hood, but if you do a lot of multitasking, the phone will definitely slow down. And uh, because it's one gigahertz by today's standards, it's kind of sluggish if you want to play back the latest games that are in full HD. At the end of the day, I have to say the Psychic 4G is still a pretty interesting and enticing device even by 2015, even though it isn't super powerful. So if you are a huge web browser, web browsing fanatic or you like to play a lot of HD games and multitask, it's not going to be the phone for you. But with that being said, if you do a lot of texting and you want to use it for some basic core functions, I think this is a great smartphone to have just because you have a lot of controls on here including a uh, pretty useful optical trackpad on the side and also a nice touchscreen display in addition to a fantastic QWERTY keyboard. Again, just taking a retro look back at the original uh, kind of Samsung Sidekick 4G, or actually the last Sidekick that was ever released. And finally, I would say that the battery life on this phone is also pretty good. It lasted me about two days before I had to recharge it again, so relatively good performance. Anyways, this has been an interesting retro look back. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment down in the description box below. Thank you for watching, here at OS Reviews.